Okay, this is a video on measuring the economic value of a merger transaction and comparing estimates of accretion and dilution with uh, uh, economic value of synergies versus premium. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, uh, general theory of a merger is that if you, let's say you were, uh, uh, okay, we'll use this company, buying companies named Exelon, and Exelon's buying NRG, and they say their transaction is accretive, meaning that if you take their earnings per share before the transaction and after the transaction, it's higher. Okay, now Exelon's shareholders could have uh, uh, went to the market and bought NRG themselves, and they wouldn't have had to pay a 37% premium. Uh, they could have just bought it themselves. And if NRG is such a good company, then uh, uh, they could have... Uh, Got the benefits of that company. Now, uh, Exelon shareholder Exelon said, "No, no, no! Don't do that. We're going to go to the shop, and even though it says that your price is 22 per share, we're going to. And you have 264 share, million shares. We're going to go and pay more than the price in the shop. It's as if you go to buy milk." And the price of milk is 22 and they said no 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 i don't want to pay 22 i want to pay more and the only reason in theory you would ever pay more for a transaction is if you get some synergies and here are the synergies and it's a good kind of example to see what a simplistic kind of analysis is done for synergies they said well even though you have all these uh, power plants and they operate essentially independently anyway Somehow we're going to get three to five percent, three to five percent, and then they said, "Well, you know, we're also going to have to spend a hundred million to achieve those synergies." Okay, and then there are some five hundred million in transaction costs. So, and there could be all of these refinancing costs because. Uh, 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 if the if the uh, bonds come due and they're uh, uh, they've got a low cost and then you have to pay a higher interest rate that could be an additional cost so what we're going to uh, do is first press shift f11 and when we press shift f11 let's do a economic analysis and that's just really a cost and benefits let's say costs to shareholders and that the cost to shareholders is really the uh, the premium you pay so let's put our premium for premium for 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 the target company who in this case is NRG Okay. No, NRG stands for nothing, probably. So to get the premium, you can put the current share price, which was uh, 22 per share, and then there were 222 per share, and then the shares were 264 million. Okay, and then the market cap was this times this. Now, uh, at a, they said the uh, exchange ratio was 0.4285. I'm not going to go through that, but they just said, okay, well, that's a 37% premium. Okay, so we can put our premium. Uh, what was that 37 percent 
and then we get our uh, consideration. And the consideration is just the, this multiplied by one plus the, that number. Okay, and that means our premium and I think this was in millions minus this. Okay, that was two in thousands. This was in, in thousands. Okay, and then now the benefits and this premium is after tax. The reason it's after tax is the share price is after tax. You have to, when you, uh, uh, when you buy and sell, that's, that's not a pre-tax amount. That's after you've, uh, uh, <laughs> okay. And now I didn't complete that sentence. Let's put the, uh, uh, benefits, net benefits. Why don't we call it net benefits? Okay, and this is a pre-tax synergy. Now, why don't we, I suppose, let's give the benefit of the doubt. Let's say it's 3 billion. This is 3 billion per year. Okay. But, you know, what we might want to do is put year. How about we'll put 1, 2, 3, 4. And... We start with 1,500, and we get up to uh, 3,000. And we can do our, the old growth rate uh, thing. I call it the old growth rate thing, but it's not really. Close that and count on your fingers. One, two, three, four, and subtract one. Uh, one divided by... Three. That's our little growth rate factor, and we just multiply this one by press the F4 button. And will you trust me that if I did this again up here, that I would get that number? Okay. All right. So that's our pre-tax synergy, and then we have cost to achieve and why don't we uh, move this let's move this up okay and the cost to achieve we have 1,000 and 100 is that 100 or 1,000 what was it oh, this is eh, eh, ah darn it 180 to 300 sorry about that One, Eight oh two three hundred, and then we have cost to achieve of one hundred. Let's see what the uh, company said that the present value of this one. So, so why don't we? Uh, we don't really have to do this. Let's put net. Okay, and it's this minus this. Okay, and. Um, let's put NPV, and how about this, up here, let, let's put a, we need a discount rate, let's say they used a 8% discount rate, it doesn't say, does it say what discount rate they used? I don't see it, okay, and so the NPV is NPV. At eight percent, at eight of this line. Now uh, that only gives us six twenty-one. But if it's at eight percent, what we could do is take this very last number and just divide it by the eight percent. That gives us a perpetuity. So we just say that that lasts for ever and ever, and then we get oh we got three thousand let let's say they use the ten percent uh, then we got two oh we'll we'll give them let's give them the benefit of it okay it's not in euro okay so that was the very very high side of uh of what they were uh, assuming and you can see already that this synergy business 
<sighs> involves uh, uh, involves discount rates. <laughs> we uh, it would be a really interesting topic, but certainly risks associated with changing management strategy, where all you have is a business plan, you have no history, no nothing else, no bankers are financing this. You have no evidence that it's really going to occur. And the, I would say the discount rate for that should be very different than the discount rate for other cash flows. This is the whole business of corporate finances. You, you have some, some real history. And then we have uh, uh, transaction costs. And let's use the opposing party who said those are 500. Okay, I'll put a minus on that one. And then we can press select this and then press alternate equals. So that's our net, net pre-tax. But we're not finished. The tax rate, federal tax rate in the U.S. is something like... Uh, is 35%, but they have all these state tax rates. And I'm not sure which where they'd really pay the state tax rate, but let's say that's about 4%. So then the combined rate, here's how you do it. You just take the, the state rate plus 1 minus the state rate times the federal rate. Okay, so you get a weighted tax rate and after tax synergies are then this number multiplied by, uh, sorry, 1 minus the tax rate. And we, so even if we use the high side, of the numbers, the high side of the numbers, we still get a net economic cost. This looks like it's not beneficial. Okay, this is the, this, here's our benefit minus our cost. So we got uh, about a half a billion uh, USD in cost, which I guess if we took out the transaction cost might be different and everything else, but that's the uh, uh, that that's the starting point, and that's how we could uh, that's how we could make an economic analysis. You see, you have to make some assumptions about discount rates, tax rates, and uh, all of this. Oh, this is our. I better put this. Oh, this is our growth rates. And remember, we had to assume that this uh, 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 continues for an indefinite amount. I suppose it could grow and everything else. So enough of that. And then in, in terms of advertising again, uh, www.financeenergyinstitute dot com. Okay. All right. Ah. Okay. Hmm. Put that here and stop the video.